spring may be springing and blossom may be blossoming, but central bankers, politicians and investors continue to hope that inflation will wither and we'll get to see the latest test of that in the coming week when the Office for National Statistics publishes the UK inflation figures for March on Wednesday the 19th of April. Remember that the February figures gave everybody a nasty surprise when the prevailing rate of inflation did not decelerate but picked up pace instead. The headline figures for last month are the benchmark against which the latest readings will be measured. And in February, inflation as measured by the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, accelerated to 10.4% year-on-year compared to 10.1% in January. The CPIH index, which includes owner-occupier housing costs, rose by 9.2% against 8.8% in the prior month. And the retail price index, or RPI, while no longer an officially recognised statistic, well, that rose 13.8% compared to 13.4% in January. On an annual basis, the greatest upward pressure came from fuel and household energy, despite government support schemes for bills, and also food and soft drinks. On a monthly basis, food, clothing, restaurants and cafes were the key drivers of the increase, and price increases here more than offset declines in petrol and diesel, as well as drops in some goods, notably sporting equipment and DVDs, the inclusion of which in the calculation at all seems a bit bizarre. Anyway, the increase in services will be of particular concern to the Bank of England, as that may mean inflation is becoming entrenched, especially as wage growth is still ticking along, especially for those in the private sector. This inflation reading could therefore help to shape the Monetary Policy Committee's next decision on the 11th of May, when markets are looking for a further one quarter point increase from the Bank of England in the base rate to 4.5%, with either August or September maybe seeing one last hike for this cycle to four and three quarter percent. On the corporate front, the first quarter results season in the USA will start to pick up pace as more banks, Goldman's, Morgan Stanley and Bank of America, will all report in the coming week, as will in no particular order, Netflix, Johnson & Johnson, IBM, Baker Hughes, Philip Morris, American Airlines and Procter & Gamble, to name but a few. Their numbers and outlook statements should, be, should be all be informative, as should the busy slate of trading statements due here in the UK. Nine FTSE 100 firms are scheduled to offer updates or host an annual general meeting or host an analyst meeting, while a fair number of mid and small caps are due to do the same. And names which may be worthy of further study include the following. Do, however, note that some of these dates could still be subject to change. Page Group on Monday the 17th of April, Anglo-American, N10, Halfords, EasyJet and Kinetic on the 18th, Rio Tinto, British American Tobacco, Hunting, Morgan Advanced Materials and TI Fluid Systems on the 19th, Hallion, Rentakill, Relics, Segro and WH Smith on the 20th, before Serica Energy will round out the week on Friday the 21st of April. But the company which could just cause the biggest fuss in the week ahead is Antofagasta. The Chilean copper miner and FTSE 100 member is due to release a first quarter trading update on Wednesday the 19th. Now Antofagasta shares are down by around 10% over the past year, and that's mainly because copper's down by 14% to just under $9,000 a tonne. However, both Antofagasta and copper have rallied a long way from their 2022 lows. Usually, a firm copper price would be seen as a good sign for the health of the global economy, as the metal's malleability, conductivity and ductility mean it's got many industrial uses across infrastructure, construction and cars to name but three. It's not for nothing it's got the nickname Dr. Copper after all. This time around though, recession fears still linger, although China's reopening raises the prospect of high demand for the industrial metal, and perhaps copper's doing well because many investors are looking toward raw materials as a possible haven from the ravages of inflation not least because central banks can't print it. Now, in terms of Antofagasta more specifically, shareholders will home in on three sets of figures when the Q1 trading update is released. The first is output. Alongside February's full year results for 2022, Antofagasta gave guidance for 2023. The Chilean firm suggested that output this year would rise by around 7% at the midpoint of guidance, which is for copper production of 670 to 710,000 tonnes, and that compares to 646,000 tonnes last year. Improved output at the Los Palambres site, which was hit by drought and reduced desalination and concentrate pipeline availability last year, is a key factor in the forecast improvement. 
The second figure is costs. In 2022, net cash costs rose by 34% to $1.61 a pound, owing to improve to movements in the Chilean peso and higher energy and fuel costs. A modest increase to $1.65 a pound is expected for this year, as output growth in a stronger peso helped to offset input cost inflation. That's the equivalent, by the way, of around $3,600 a ton in metric terms. And the third and final figure is capital expenditure. Antofagasta so spent $1.9 billion in 2022, and management currently expects a similar figure for 2023. All of those numbers will shape profits and cash flow, and any change in guidance on any of them could lead to changes in analysts' forecasts for earnings and dividends. Antofagasta is unlikely to comment here, but on the off chance that it does, the consensus forecast for Antofagasta's profits is to rise by a fifth to $3.5 billion this year, based on its preferred metric of earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization, or EBITDA, helped on both counts by higher output and firmer pricing. The dividends actually expected to come in at 55 US cents a share. That's actually down a fraction from 59.7 cents in 2022. I hope that you and your families are all in good health and good spirits. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.